you have an audio engineer background, right? So when critical, sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. So when critical thinking was in post then, were you heavily involved with the sound design or the composing or selection of music as well? Were you there? Because I think you were there. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> No, so basically, I did not, I, I'm not an audio engineer by, uh, you know, from college when, yes. when I was 48, mm -hmm. which was a long time ago because I'm 60. No way. Way. Um, you look really good for 60. I'm just telling you that right now. Thank you, but I am 60 no matter what. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when I was 48, um, I was... I've always been very interested in music, not just listening to it, but understanding mm -hmm. why it makes me feel a certain way, different songs and stuff like that. And I also am a big Mozart lover. I mean, I, I have, uh, I just did, did dug deep into Mozart and, and Bach. And okay. um, I wanted to understand how, for example, like a Kanye West or whatever was able to manipulate sound um, mm -hmm. and why is it that the ear you know hears differently different sounds and why certain chords make you feel a certain way any musician knows that certain chords make you feel either sad or happy or whatever but I wanted to understand how it is that on a computer you can make these things happen and not only understand it I wanted to learn how to do it so I went back to school um, to become an engineer. And you know, the students were 20 years old, 25 right out of college or instead of college, whatever. And it was interesting. You know what I say? But you know, I I I have my degree and I I feel like I actually have a tattoo on my foot, which I will not show you today, but it's no it's a physics equation about it's called the phase shift equation actually and it's how how to how to um make music on the compute on a computer without having to count seconds in your mind or whatever it's actually a, a formula using frequency times the times times this times 360 degree it's a whole thing but it's it's really how how to do it and i it, the formula is big enough to you know to write my own to write it around the room it's a physics formula but i took a tiny part because i you know so i i was very you know i learned how to do that so when we did post um and we did the music design i was certainly not the, I, I didn't want to, and I would never have mm -hmm. been the lead, you know, engineer because I, I never actually, I, I went to school and I got my degree, but I didn't become an audio engineer for anybody other than myself. Yes. I made my own songs. I did my own stuff, um, but not for anybody else. <clears throat> so, but when we did, when we were designing the sound, I did, ha they, they did allow me um, some input. Um, and that was a lot of fun because that was the one yeah. time that I actually understood the language that they were speaking. So that was, that was the thrill for me. Yeah. Matt, anything with audio or whatever is very complicated to me. Like, um, I remember in first year we had to take a sound as a part of our course. Yes. And I realized I'm better at listening to it than playing around with it. So I respect it's not easy no it's, it's not i respect not, soundies i mean it's easy it's easier just to play an instrument and get recorded but mm -hmm. the, the recording engineers it's a lot of physics a lot of math and also a lot of intuition yes <laughs> exactly you know? and if you have intuition you could kind of if you don't have an engineering background you can tell your engineer I want it to sound like this. I wanted to, that's why there's like, that, that, that's why there's terminology like um, the T-Pain effect, you know, that kind of thing. T-Pain, the rapper, he, rapper. he you know, right. He yeah. has, he, 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 um, he coined, you know, an, an effect um, uh, when he sings. And I would say that, you know, 
Oh. If every rapper or every just singer, you know, when they manipulate their voices on a computer, they use the T-Pain effect. There's other, there's, there's so many, that's just one that comes to mind. And I, you know, I just simply wanted to learn yeah. what, what it meant. And I did, but again, I wouldn't consider myself an active audio engineer, but I do, I did, I did, I did learn. Uh, so going back to, um, you know, you, you being a, an executive producer for Critical Thinking and everything, you also produced numerous fitness videos as well. So I am curious to know, was it a huge jump uh, producing from a film to like fitness videos? And if there was, what are some things that you like from the both different worlds? Well, that's a really good question. And um, so this was my first movie. Yes. I'm not shy to tell the world that. You did a great job. I don't think, don't I don't think you need to have made a hundred movies to be able to make a movie, um, especially when you're surrounded by such talented individuals who make up for the things that you don't know. Mm -hmm. Having said that, in the 90s, when exercise videos were the thing to do, yeah. <laughs> I, I did 15. So uh, internationally distributed. So it's actually, um, the exact same, the exact same process. You, you get an idea, you get the money, you cast it, you film it. You, well, I'm sorry, you write, you cast it, you write a script, you film it, you edit it, and then you have it in your hand. Yeah. Then what? You have to sell it. It's mm -hmm. not, anybody can make a video. So that experience 15 times over gave me the understanding of a life cycle of, a, of an idea. Ideas are everywhere, everywhere. And the idea of every different fitness video I did was a completely 180 from the last one that I did. Okay. And the only, the only thing that joins every one together, including critical thinking, is to follow the exact, this is for me. I'm only talking for myself, not for the world. But for me, it was the exact same process. It was just on a much grander scale, whereas the crew for critical thinking may have included a couple hundred people every day. The crew for the fitness videos was maybe 50 people, but yet you still have to sell it and you still have to get your money back and you still have to give the um, investor his money back and the return on investment. But the, but there is something to say about return on investment. There's emotional return on investment as well. There are people, I believe that um, the return on investment is also can make you really happy and not just a lot of money. Um, if, if you are so committed to a particular idea, in my case, video collaboration with someone or, or critical thinking, sometimes just getting it done and selling it is so grand, grand and so magical that the return on investment can be emotional as well. And there you can it's almost like emotional um, in, instead of your IQ, in IQ, it's an EQ, you know, your emotional quotient. I believe it's yeah. very important to love every product that you're doing and every project that you're doing, even if it's a small fitness video or a movie. And if you don't have fun and you don't enjoy it and you don't get an emotional return, then you're not doing it right or you shouldn't be doing it. Because if it's just for money, it's not going to work. It, that's my opinion. I'm not claiming that anybody else feels that way, but that's just the way. That's how I have managed to to get everything done yeah. and out there. Yeah, of course. You, it, having passion involved in your works or whatever it just it makes it better and, and stuff like that. Like, right. It's not just a job. Exactly. If you don't have the passion, then it's just a job. Right. Right. Without that passion, it's just a job then. Which, right. When it comes to filmmaking, either fitness, like you said, fitness or 
critical thinking is something you need more. You need something more than just it being a job, but passion in it, which I totally 100% yeah. agreed with it, right? And then so uh, moving on then, you created your own yoga uh, athletic brand as well then. Um, did it stem from uh, producing these fitness videos then? Or were you just always involved with it? What happened was um, I was always into Eastern fitness, whether it was karate, martial arts. I used to do Kung Fu, Shaolin Kung Fu. And, um, yeah, for I did it for 11 years. Um, yeah. Another shout out to Riza, who also practices Shaolin Kempo. Like I, I practice, I, I don't want to say I practice, he practices Shaolin Kempo like me. I practice Shaolin yeah. Kempo like him. He was a big, he doesn't know this, but he was a, a big influence for me. Um, my whole, my whole uh, time practicing martial arts. I, I just want to say, I loved how you shout out Riza because I was just about to say shout out to Wu Tang. <laughs> so I'm getting there. So shout out to Riza for the for the camp for the Shaolin. Yeah. But also shout out to Riza for Wu Chess because Wu Tang has an extension called Wu Chess, and Wu Tang basically. Uh, for the last, I would say, 25 years, maybe more, has been giving back to the New York public school system with chess really? uh, in the schools, yes. And so that was another big, huge influence mm -hmm. when I was um, trying to keep my head up for 20 years, you know. Yes. Um, and um, so um, what happened is after I finished my martial arts training, and you never finish, but... Mm -hmm. Something happened with the studio I was practicing and it closed. So I had to find something else Eastern because I really wasn't into like weightlifting or jogging or anything like that. So I found yoga and I practiced, it's almost 20 years now that I've been practicing and I used to own a studio and I used to be, I was actually one of the first people that would, would practice and teach yoga to hip hop um, and stuff. Uh, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was great. <laughs> People would be like, what, at the first couple of classes, they're like, what is this? And then they were like, no more yoga music for us, you know? And I'm like, agreed, you know? <laughs> so actually hip hop, hip hop, the beats per minute, um, mimic your heartbeat. Whereas the yoga music that you, you hear is very slow and incredibly, you know, beautiful, but it, sometimes it can, it can yield clock watching Mm -hmm. class out by the students and yeah. a little boredom so I you know I, I mixed it up a bit not for my students but for me and then it <laughs> caught on but but anyway I realized after practicing for a long time in about about three years ago um, I realized that um, I was having trouble balancing in poses that were were either easy or hard because I was trying too hard I was using brute force to try to look good for like an Instagram picture instead of, and I was working against gravity, which you can't, as you know, work against gravity. <laughs> so I invented a line of yoga wear, which is patented called Perfect Balance World. Yeah. And what it is, is I, um, I, I built the balance into the clothing and I put landmarks on wherever your feet, hands, knees, or any other part of your body land, whether it's under your arms or in between, like in under on your inner thighs, the bottoms of your feet, your hands with the clothing. So you never fall out of a yoga pose ever again, because you literally land on something you can feel. So you develop muscle memory. It doesn't actually, you don't stick to it like crazy glue, but it does give you a sense of I'm, I'm there. So you, you, you literally use gravity to your advantage because you're centered yeah. and, and it took off. Um, That's a took, very interesting technology though. Like, no way. Yeah. It took I, off. Um, the problem is that, um, well, there's no problem. The thing is that when it took off is when uh, we greenlit um, critical thinking. So I kind of um, put that aside for a while. Of course, yeah. uh, until until critical thinking was over and post and all that and released. 
So I'm kind of working a little bit on that now. Yeah. Again. But yeah, so that's basically what Perfect Balance World is all about. I like how you develop this whole technology and everything. Um, because I myself have had, I, sorry, I've had troubles with doing some of these yoga poses. And to have something to help you hold that pose, it, it really does. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it was, it's, it's, you know, sometimes the best products are something that solves a problem. And I'm not talking about a manufactured problem so that you can manufacture a solution. Yes. No, I'm talking about a real life problem that you have managed to, to have a solution for. And I did it for myself. And then I realized, oh my goodness, I think I'm onto something and um, created a line of, of clothing and mm -hmm. trademarked a 30 minute routine using all the clothing and all the poses and you never fall out of a yoga pose ever, ever again. So, um, yeah, I just wanna say thank you for being, um, being on WebUff with us and, and, and agreeing to do this interview with us. It's such a, a dream could you basically just to have you on here and everything um my pleasure just i'm just happy that netflix canada finally picked us up and everybody that has netflix in canada can watch the movie finally yeah. Yeah. I, I i agree so uh, i'm just gonna say everyone out there watching uh, this is carla berkowitz uh interviewing with uh wepa if you have any last words you want to say carla thank you for being so sensitive at such a young age Mm -hmm. to and asking really important questions which I've not been asked by you know some of the questions I have not been asked by other more seasoned interviewers and I appreciate the fact that you appreciate how this that this movie has a higher and better use than just eyeballs on a screen that it has the ability to change and fix things and make people's lives a little bit easier that don't have it so easy. They can see what can happen. Yeah. Um, again, uh, th thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate this so much.